good afternoon, and thanks very much uh, for uh, being back here. And, and I, um, I have to, first of all, acknowledge it's the first time that I got my sister with me, so I just want to say thank you for being here, and also uh, member teams of Galan and got part of the board as well. So uh, thank you for being here and part of this journey. I am, as yeah, we are in a training halt, and all what I can say is that we're going to do our resource update, which is significant. So that's all what I can say about the incoming news. Um, and it's a resource update. What I can tell you is that why are we doing it? Why are we updating our resource when we already have a resource of um, 2.3 million tons sitting in the ground in, uh, at Ombre Marta West? And the reason why is that we are in the middle of a definitive feasibility study. And for such, you need um, a measured uh, resource that uh, you can use that as a base for your reserve statement. So that's a conceptual um, way of doing things. And as um, well, uh, common knowledge on Galan, we're doing a DFS, we're doing that with Hatch. We expect to have that by Q1 next year. There's been a few delays here and there. Delays uh, do happen, and uh, hopefully uh, they are for also the right reasons. But um, what I can tell you uh, about our developments and where we are, and the picture that uh, you can see there, it, um, it speaks a thousand words. This was an idea five years ago uh, in which we were trying to tell or trying to test, can we find lithium in a place that everybody knew there was already plenty of lithium? So um, we went to the salt flat of Ombre Muerto out of a hunch and uh, an, an idea and quit my job. I was with Canaco at the time. Many of you, um, you know, they kindly say hello to me. So thank you for <laughs> not, not forgetting about where, where we all met. Um, but uh, today, what we can say is that the pilot plant is advancing. We're evaporating. We hap we hap happen. We will like to think that it will have um, concentrate by um, sometime this summer, fingers crossed on the weather. But um, also we have a camp. We already have next week a camp that can serve up to 45 beds, and we have another camp at Candelas, and all up is 70, pe 70 people. Uh, a few weeks ago, we announced that we want a 200 camp, 200 man camp. And the reason being is that we want to be a producer. We want to be the next producer at the Lithium Triangle. And why is this? Why the rush? Well, let's think conceptually, and before I go into the presentation, conceptually, lithium is here to stay, and why is here to stay? If you think and are of the view that the electric vehicle is going to be running batteries in every single car, let's think of the universe of cars in the world. If you want to round it up for simple exercise, there could be around 100 million cars made every year, and every car will require approximately 60 kilos of lithium carbon equivalent, then the, hundred, the, the, the whole 100% of the fleet in batteries, that's around 6 million tons of lithium carbon equivalent. The production figure for this year is 655,000. So where are we going to get 10 times that? And let's assume that we'll, we'll replace just 25% of that. So that's 1.5 million. Then when is that going to be? The current penetration rate is around 16% and growing every year. So despite recession, despite you know, the, the boogeyman and everything that you hear on the market. Lithium is there very strong. As a reflection of that is the lithium price. It's sitting around $80,000 a ton. So I'll leave you with that thought, that the demand of lithium is not going away. Lithium here is going to be really strong. The dividends that lithium companies could um, pay in the future, once into production, they will be significant, will be something that you've never seen before. And these companies will keep growing, keep looking for lithium. But to get 10 times the production, then there's a lot of things that need to happen. So we are on that race. We want to get to market. We want to be a producer as soon as possible. And therefore, the work that we're doing, and part of the work is to update the resource. So um, what I can tell you about Galan, you probably know about who we are and what we are. We entirely held 17% its own by the management and, and, and the board, top 20 is 54%. So we are also set, if we do well, to grow very quickly. So our cash position also is important because we have approximately $54 million in the last quarter. We are trying to be conservative with our cash and spend it wisely. So we're always thinking about what else we can do. I mentioned many times, this is for us, it's a marathon, not a sprint. 
Um, we're doing this in a conventional way, as you have seen. The ponds, we're not using DLE because it's too much risk. We don't want to be the first one. And also, we're in the middle of nowhere. We have 4,000 meters. There's no plenty of water, no plenty of power. Therefore, we're using evaporation because the sun is free. So why is not good to like about that? And our water usage is minimal. So horses for courses. If we were in a part that's plenty of water and power, yeah, we may give it a go to DLE, even though no one today commercially is producing DLE. So um, we are on a, on a significant path. And what we like to think is, uh, how can we penetrate the market as quick as possible? So these are all the things that we are, as a company, a board, thinking constantly about how to minimize time to do things in a, in a very simple way. So why Galan? And um, there's no better salt flat in Argentina than Hombro Muerto. So why? Uh, you can see the proof is in the pudding. We have Bosco, Livent, and Olchem. So those are big companies that are sitting in the same salt flat. We always say that we're in elephant country, and we are baby elephant, but we're still part of the same family. And why I say the same family is because the matrix of impurities of Ombre Muerto, it reflects in the same way that we have. We have low impurities and high grade. We have done preliminary studies that are showing things are ticking the boxes at eighteen and a half thousand dollars a ton. Mention where the price is, it could go to a hundred thousand. You can do the math. We're doing this in a responsible way with a low um, carbon footprint because we are using the sun to advantage. So there's no CO2 burning from fossil fuels. And everything that we try to do, we're trying to do with solar panels as well. And we try to minimize our impact in every way possible. So this is a project that's maturing, and we'll be reflecting those numbers once we finish the study. We are moving as fast as we can. Yes, there are delay, but um, we're still on track. We're still on focus to deliver what we say that we'll do. And now the team. So if uh, Galan, in, in a nutshell, there are three things that are very strong, and that could be identified as, as a company in lithium. We have a fantastic project with high-grade, low impurities. That's hard to replicate. Second is that we have the cash to develop this in, in the studies phase, and maybe some cash for doing early works. And lastly, the team. Today, it is a rat race to produce, so we're not the only one, but we have a very good team, all the way from the board to management to all the ranks. And I make a joke um, constantly that our ticket's GLN. It should be changed to XQM. The reason why I say this is because we have so many X SQM people in our team that you know <laughs> we should change the ticket because it's 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 um it's very interesting the quality of the people that we go into work for us and people makes a difference. People execute, people make the projects happen. So we're not just a West Perth based company that never seen lithium or do not doesn't know what to do. We've done this, the team has done it. So this is why our approach is very simple. And in terms of a strategy, I'll get more into it, but are we trying to start, we want to walk before we run. We are a mining company, mining companies does produce the, the lithium, we like to concentrate and not become a chemical company that does lithium carbonate. And I'll get into, in a, in a minute into that. And also, do not forget, we have candelas. Candelas can also increase our production profile in the future. And fingers crossed, we do have the Green Bushes um, project that is slower than expected, but are we advancing as fast as we can? And there are some indications that that could be some smoke, so keep an eye on this. So conceptually, this is where we are. We are in the lithium salt flat. The other half of the lithium comes from that part of the world mainly. The first half comes from Australia, as you're all familiar with Australian companies. So this is the image, satellite image. Um, so what it's to like about this is all the red dots that you see on the west. Those are drill holes. So, and the spacing is very tight. And as I mentioned, we want to convert our indicated resource to measured base of the maiden reserves statement that we're going to come up once we finish our study. And um, so you can see where we're sitting. And, and the key thing in, of this is that even though it doesn't look that big and large in the, our footprint, I would like you to challenge you to think on 3Ds. The deep holes that we um, we um, shown, the deepest one is 720 meters. So when you have a system with sand and deep, you know, it's not the surface expression. You have to tilt it and you have to see geometrically what you have. So this is what makes Galan high grade, low impurities uh, associated with the, um, with the same system of Ombre Muerto, and we can have the same sort of um, qualities that we see and um, a decent tonnage. 
Uh, so this picture, it tells you where Galan is sitting. So on the left axis, you got the ratio of lithium to magnesium, and then on the right axis, you got grade. Ombre Mort is sitting on the far right of the chart. So grade is king. It gives us a possibility to change things around. It gives us possibilities to concentrate our, our brine into technical high grade that is, can be up to 33% lithium carbon equivalent. So with that in mind, let's think about the things that we can do. We can place something that we don't have to qualify. We can use the same things and apply the same principles that the Australian miners are doing. Look at Pilver Mineral. You know, look how successful they've been. So we can replicate in a similar way something that is 6% lithium metal content that equates to 14% lithium oxide if you are familiar with spodiumine. So there's no spodiumine produced today with 14% content. So this is something that we have to advantage. We're pushing for it. We want to get quick to market. The economics of Ombre Marta West, you can, uh, all of this is online, so I'm just going to skip through it. But um, what I want to tell you is this is a very strong project. We have $18,500, an MPV of $2 billion. Um, what we've done at Ombre Marta West, as explained, we have the ponds. We do have um, advance. We're going to be um, updating the market as we are progressing and we're ticking the boxes on our predicted model to get to that 6% lithium concentrate in metal. Same goes with Candela's. Candela's not to dismiss, it's still got high grade, same grade as Oro Cobre at Olaros. So if you're all familiar with that, we got even better grade than them and we still got a very strong economic project. So where it does it sit both projects in there on the production curve? Right in the middle for Candela's and right on the left side for Ombra Marta West. So the combined production of these two projects in the long term is up to 34,000 tons of lithium carbon equivalent. So if the price gets to be about uh, well, $80,000, you do the math. There's a lot of money to be made, and this is what we want to do. We want to do this step by step. We don't want to overpromise, but we do want to get there. We want to do this in the safest possible manner because it's too good to miss. We do have, um, we're having um, Circular doing the ESG study. So once we finalize our um, definitive, definitive feasibility study, we'll have the numbers of our CO2 um, emissions and the traceability of our product. So things that we've done, we are in the, um, well, we are a bit late for what we said on the resource update, but we, we finally got there. And the next thing is update. Next thing is the DFS, the next thing is permits and permits. I would like to think that we are by mid next year we should have them, and and with that we'd like to come out, um, come to start producing. So, if we fast forward a year, um, I would like to say that we're in the construction phase. So this is a big milestone. The company is going to be completely changed to where it's sitting today. So we've been quiet a bit because we are trying to do things right, but uh, we are now at a, a big inflection point to say where we are. Um, a bit of the board, you've seen a few of the guys. I would like to highlight that Daniel Jimenez is our star in, in our board. He was the senior VP of commercial of SQM. Uh, without him, we couldn't have an XQM team. So we do have people that have been there, done it, 28 years at SQM. SQM today is still the biggest and the largest producer of lithium brines in the world, and that's in Chile. Our team in Catamarca, our team in Chile, our team, um, it's, it's, it's very united, and we, um, we have done a lot in our, in our progress, and the proof isn't what you're seeing on the pictures. We are getting there. And, um, and lastly, I would like to show you where we're at, at the Greenbushes South. This um, is something that, please keep an eye. We're moving slowly, but surely we'll, we'll be um, able to drill at some stage, and this could be the cherry on the cake for Galan. So with that, I would like to close my presentation, and thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Yeah.